GarageBand is a fully equipped music creation studio right on your Mac. And there's also an app for iPhone and iPad that you could get from the App Store. In this video, I'm gonna show you exactly how to use GarageBand in seven easy steps. And at the end of the video, I'll show you the correct setting when you export your project, when you're ready to share it. Now, creating music and recording instruments is not the only thing you could do in GarageBand. You could actually record voice too. So a lot of people use it for voice over a podcast. I'll show you that in this video too. If you go to the application folder on your Mac, you should see GarageBand. If you don't, you could just go to the Apple website here that I'll link below and download GarageBand here if for some reason you uninstalled it at some point. Now, when you first open it up, you may go to an existing project. If you do and you don't see this page, go to File and go to New, and it will land you right on this page. Now, on this page, we have a few options. We could actually start a new project, which is what I'm gonna show you. It's the best way to learn. And then you also have project templates when you're more advanced and you wanna try some things that are already built out for you and you have some lessons to play instruments. We'll go to new project for now and choose this project. And here you have to decide what you're going to do in GarageBand. I'm gonna cover audio recording here for recording voiceover on podcast in a couple of steps from now. But typically what you wanna do is you wanna choose a drummer because these drummers automatically play along with your song. So they kind of lay that down for you automatically. And then you could add instruments and vocals to it after that. So that is the easiest way to get started, which I'm gonna show you here. So I'm gonna choose drummer in this case, and then we'll cover some of these other settings in a second. I'll press create. And this is your drummer track here. So to preview or to listen to anything, just press space bar. So that's the default drum here, but you can change this. There's lots of options here for changing it. So if I select this drummer, as long as my library tab is extended, I will see other drummers over here. So you could see the different types of drummers by genre here. So if I wanna pick a rock drummer here, I could choose this and it's gonna switch out my drummer here. And if I press space bar, it's gonna be a whole different beat here. And with each beat here that the drummer lays down, you have ton of options. For example, you could change the tempo of the beat. So if you want the beat to be much faster, you could go ahead and raise this way up. And if I press play now, it's a much faster tempo here, or you could reduce the tempo. So this one comes in really useful up here. And then if you have this up here open, and if you don't just press the scissor icon here, and it will give you this whole section here, you could choose this track and make a lot of changes to it. For example, you could make it much softer or you can make it more complex if you go over here. And if you just move this around, you could do a combination or in between any of these. So loud and complex would go over here, less loud and complex more to the center, soft and simple all the way down here. And that's gonna change your bass drummer here. And with each track that you've laid down, and we're gonna lay down more tracks here, your bass track here has a volume knob here. So when we get to mixing, you know, you wanna typically bring some of these down or some of these up where you mix multiple tracks, which we'll talk about. You could always press this option as well to solo a track if you would just wanna hear that track, or you could go ahead and mute a track entirely over here. And this lets you pan a track if you want to pan a track and have a track on the left and on the right. So that's the basics of setting up a project. Now, let's look at adding tracks and I wanna introduce you to loops which are pre-designed. So to add a track right over here, you just press the plus sign here and it's gonna bring you back to the same page we started on, right? So you already set up the drummer. Now, typically you wanna add another instrument, for example. So one instrument you could add is if you have a USB MIDI keyboard, you could select this option and play keyboard. If you have a guitar, you could go ahead and connect that and record that as well. In this case, I'll choose this because it has actually a virtual option. I don't have a keyboard here, but I could show you this anyway. I'll press create here. And then lastly, we'll record the vocals when we come back. Here, you could also choose what kind of instrument you're going to play. So again, you have a bunch of different options. So by default here, I'm on vintage electric piano. I could change it here and you can see it changes it here and it will also change your settings down here, your controls if you have those open. So let's do classical electric piano here and it's gonna open it up for me. But do explore this, they do have lots of different variety of options over here to choose 
For example, if you choose a drum kit here, it's gonna change that track over here to drum kit. I'll go back to the piano here and double click to add that as my track. Now all the same settings apply here. There's an option here under Windows called musical typing. So if I select this, if I don't have a keyboard, I could actually select a keyboard like this and I could use my actual keyboard on my computer to play this piano. Now, if you change this instrument, this keyboard also changes and you could choose what part of the keyboard you're using. So you could go on this side of the keyboard here and you have a couple of different options as far as the layout of the keyboard goes as well. Okay, so if you don't have an external keyboard, which I recommend if you're gonna record, you can still use this keyboard and use your computer's keyboard to do this. Now, if you change it, if I go to piano, for example, just a grand piano, it's gonna change it to this now. Now, this is more of a classical piano here that I've set up. That's adding tracks. And since I don't have a, a keyboard here set up, let me show you loops. So loops are over here, this option right here, press this. And by default, there is ton of loops installed in GarageBand. Now, if you don't see any of them or they're not installed, they may not be installed. Go to GarageBand up here and go to Sound Library and make sure you download all available songs. Now, this may take a while if you don't have any installed because this is about 20 gigabytes or so of music here that you would go ahead and download. You could actually look up based on instruments. So if I wanna choose a piano loop here, I could go there. You also have descriptors and genres to choose from. Here, I could select any of these to see what they sound like. And it will play the loop down here for me. Let me actually try this one. So to add this, all you have to do is bring it over here. And if it's not gonna let you put it on an audio track, you just create a new track this way. If I drop this here, it's gonna create a loop for me exactly based on what I chose here. And you could add as many different types of loops as you want based on what you choose here and just drag them. So I could drag another piano loop over here, for example. Obviously, it's not gonna sound good on top of each other, but it's that easy to do it. And if you wanna delete it, just right click over here and delete that track and press delete and it's gonna be gone just like that. Now I'll show you extending a track and editing a track in a second. But before we do that, let's look at adding voiceover or vocals here and recording that as well. And when I show you that, I'll show you exactly how recording works with instruments as well. But to add a vocal again, I'm gonna come up here and press the plus sign. And this time we'll go ahead and add a vocal track. Now this is really critical because, let me show you here by default, I'm choosing input one here. We definitely wanna change our setting here because I think by default, if you're using your computer, your device, your input device, which is your microphone, is just gonna be set to system setting or your built-in microphone, which obviously is gonna sound terrible if you're recording voiceover. So the microphone I like is called Shure MV7, and it's USB and XLR, it's both. So you could just connect with a USB to a computer, very useful, I'll link this below in the description. So you would have to get something that is gonna sound good. I have this with a pop filter here, so I'm gonna select this, and I'm gonna close it. So that's typically all I have to do. And if you wanna hear your instruments as you play, if you have a headphone, for example, go ahead and check this on. I'm gonna press create. And by the way, if any of these settings don't make sense to you, there's this really useful question mark here. If you select it, and as you scroll over different items, it's gonna tell you exactly what they are and exactly what they do. So this one, here, incoming signal on audio tracks that are not record enabled. So it's gonna tell you exactly what each thing does. So when you're starting out, sometimes it's useful if you just have this on the side. So anytime you go over something, you know exactly what it's for. I'll close it for now. So here's my audio track now. This is my vocal track. To record vocals, what I have to do is, my other microphone's actually kind of far away from me. So I would check the volume here to make sure it's loud enough. It's not right now just because the microphone's on the other side of the table. But all I have to do to record this track is come up over here and press the record option. It's... Okay, so that did not work because it's playing my drum and my piano and I don't have a headphone, right? So that's not gonna work. So let me delete this. So it's recommended you have a headphone on if you want to actually hear the beat. 
But in this case, if I'm just recording voiceover for a podcast, for example, let me just go ahead and solo this track right here with this option. So it's not gonna play these other ones. And then I'll go ahead and press record here. And now anything I'm saying is going to get recorded on this track. And when I'm done, I could just press spacebar to pause it. Anytime I wanna pick it up, I could just press record and it will give me the countdown and start record right after this without overwriting it. Now, if I wanted to overwrite, I could come back here and then press record, for example, and it'll pick it up right on this line and you could see it's erasing what was previously there and I'll press stop here. Okay, I'm gonna just delete a couple of sections here. And if you wanna loop a section and you wanna hear it over and over again, just grab this section right here and bring it on as far as you want and it will just loop that section. So if you wanna just loop this section here, I'll just press spacebar here and it's just gonna play this and then loop it over and over again. You get the idea here on how to record voice. Now, if you are recording a musical track, just select that track and then this time I don't have a keyboard, so I'm gonna bring up the keyboard here and press record. And I could go ahead and record that way. Now make sure the looping is not on so you could record for a longer time. So if you press C here, it would disable that looping and the option for that is over here as well. So the cycling or the looping, you don't wanna turn on if you just wanna record continuously. Now let's look at editing a track. Now we have a few different tracks. How do we edit tracks? Well, one of the most useful ways to edit a track, typically sometimes you want to extend a track like this piano here. To make it longer, you just go at the end and drag it out. Now, if it's a loop like this, it's easily draggable and you could extend it as far as you want. If it's a automatic drummer, same thing. You could go ahead and extend it out and it's gonna let you extend it out this way. And to bring it back or to reduce it, same thing. You just bring it back and then you could go ahead and reduce it this way. Now, what if you wanna actually make a cut in between here? Let's say I wanted to take out this section of vocals here. All you have to do, let me extend this out a little bit so you can see. If you wanna make a edit in the middle of a track, you have to split first. So to split a track, if you just right click on it, there's an option split at playhead. Playhead is this yellow line. So if I split here, it's gonna give me a cut right here. And then I could go where I want the cut to happen again and I'll split over here as well. So there's a keyboard shortcut too that comes in really handy if you wanna use that. I'll select it and there we go. Now if I select this, I could delete it and bring this section back and it deleted that section for me. And with everything you have command Z and that lets you undo things if you press it multiple times if you make a mistake. Command Z is pretty default on undo for every app on the Mac. Now this option is pretty cool. There's an option to bring in a movie track if you're like composing a song or if you wanna go along with a video. If I come up to file here and choose movie and open a movie, I could bring in a video file, okay? So I could bring in this video file, for example, press open on it. And this is gonna give me a preview window which I could kind of shrink down and put somewhere else. But if you look over here, if I just scrub through here, I could see the preview of my movie and I could make this as big as small as I want. But what I could do here is split the audio for me. So I could actually work with the audio over here and actually compose music to go along with that audio. A really useful way for composing videos here or movies right on GarageBand. And let's look at adding effects and mixing our finished project. So to add effects, if I choose a track here, let me go ahead and solo this track, my vocals. Typically, if you have this option available to you or open right here on the bottom, it's gonna let you have controls and EQ available to you. One of my favorite things with this is with the controls here, there are these things called plugins. Let me show you plugins. And with plugins, you could add ton of different plugins like echo and reverb or noise gates. And if these things are too advanced for you, there are some advanced tutorials online for these, but they also have in the library tab, if you have the library tab open here, they have voice effects by default. So if you wanna make your voice, for example, sound brighter, just double click this so now this is bright voice, or if I double click, it's the narration voice, and I have a bunch of settings down here that I could play around with with controls and EQ too, if I know what I'm doing down here. Again, a little too advanced for a beginner's guide, but you could go ahead and play around with these. I typically just use the default over here for some of these sounds just to get me going with better effects. 
So once we have everything set to our liking, we need to mix down our tracks. So if I have narration going on, I typically want my drummer to be at a lower volume. I want my guitar or my piano to be at a lower volume. So that's how you would just mix it down here and just press play and listen and make sure your audio or your vocals or your voiceover is audible. Or if you just have a song, make sure whatever instrument you want to dominate to be louder than your background instruments. And you get the idea, you just play around with these and you could pan left and right too if you like. Now, whenever you get done with your project here, I'm gonna show you how to export it. One thing I wanna note that I haven't shown you, there's this notepad option too that comes in handy if you wanna just leave reminders for yourself. So the first thing we need to do is go to file and we need to save as. Now this is just saving our project file. This is not saving the actual song or podcast. So I'm gonna name this whatever I want up here and then save it as a project. So I can actually come back to this version of the project at any time to make edits. So make sure you do that first. Now to export or share this, go to the share menu and export song to disc and then name your project up here. Just type in your name and then you want to choose the file format. Now AAC and MP3 are very compressed audio files. So if you wanna share via email, these are pretty good, but they are compressed. If you want really high quality AIFF and WAV files are the uncompressed version of audio. Very good sound quality, but obviously much bigger file sizes than like an MP3 file. But with MP3, you do have some quality settings as well that you could change and get the highest quality for a MP3. I typically do wave, it's uncompressed, it's CD quality is what I need here. And I just press export. And then it's gonna go through as long as your project is and it's gonna actually get it ready to export. <laughs> I imported a very long video, so it's actually going through that. And if you can't find where the file went, typically it goes to your home folder here and it goes under the music tab and there's GarageBand, and this is where your exported project is. So if you don't want it there, you could just choose desktop when you press share, so you know where it's at exactly. And if I just press spacebar, I could go ahead and preview that song here. And this is my project file, so anytime I could double click to come back to the same project to make adjustments. And that's your crash course into using GarageBand. I hope you found it useful. Please give it a thumbs up, subscribe for easy to follow tutorials just like this one, and I'll see you next time.